Hello, and welcome to another Open Hotel video and podcast. Uh, today, I'm going to be drinking coffee and talking to Peter Coleman. Peter is an OTA guru and implementation manager at Open Hotel, and we're going to find out everything he knows about OTAs. So let's get started. Hey, Peter. How's it going today? Good. How are you? Wonderful. Good. I'm having a cup of coffee because it's been a uh, busy day and I need a little kick. So. Wish I drank it. <laughs> you don't drink coffee? The only person that ever worked in the hotel business that didn't drink coffee. It's I, th I think this is true. I think you're already an outsider. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, you know, today I just want to chit chat and find out, you know, a little bit about you and about some of the things you do. Uh, but rather than you describing what you do, how would your mom or your dad, uh, if they were around, describe what you do? I think they would think I was a hotel guidance counselor. So that's, that's kind of what it seems like quite often. So but that's that's how they would view it. That, well, you know what? That's a pretty good job. You know, it is. It is. Know. Every day is different, and I enjoy them all. So, so let, let's get a little more involved in that. Tell us now. You tell us what you do. I coordinate the integrations of the channel manager part of the Open Hotel program with the uh, Expedia or Booking.com, Agoda, whatever account that they have. Um, setting them up with the channel manager so that the rate plans in the PMS coordinate with those channels. So, okay. Yeah, the channel manager coordinates the inventory and rates so that it's all one seamless platform. So then do you also, I assume, troubleshoot or you give advice or? Yeah, um, like I said before, every day is different and every day presents some type of challenge, which is fun. It's different. It, that, that I think is one of the best parts of my job. It, every day is different. It's just, there's, every day people find a way to step the wrong way or, or are looking for uh, a way of trying to do some things better. And if I could assist them with that, that's great. Yeah. That's great, that's great. So how long have you been with Open Hotel? Five and a half years now. Really? Yeah, yeah. It seems like five and a half months. Times go, time goes by way too fast. So. And how long have you known me? Oh my God, do we have to know each other? We have to say 20 years plus? <laughs> we're going to be aging ourselves. <laughs> can, we, can I add that we were both 12 when we met? That's right, that's it. I, I think. I think it's 23 years now. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Peter was around when we started Open Hotel. So yeah, we were just talking about that yesterday, the the, uh, the first office that I remember. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to go into that story more on another podcast. So, yeah. Uh, so um, Tell us how you got your job. I know because I was there. But you were there. Um, the word that comes to mind is serendipity. You were two thousand miles away from home, and I ran into you in a local hotel motel association meeting. And you said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, this is where I'm now, but I'm burnt. I'm leaving." And you were like, "Well, how about you and your wife? We meet for dinner tonight. Let's talk." So, and then that was the beginning. So, I know. Yeah, and it does seem like it was five and a half months ago. So. You know, I I still remember standing in line at that hotel motel meeting. I mean, when you said you were burnt, I almost got goosebumps. I mean, yeah. I do. Right then, it was so exciting. Yeah. You know? Serendipity. Yep. 
So how did you get into the hotel industry? Uh, when I was um, 13 going on 14, my parents bought a hotel and it started off as uh, more of a country inn, local tavern, restaurant, um, and it ended up being, uh, for, for good reasons, it ended up being more of a nightclub and uh, full service restaurant and less of um, hotel facility. But that's, I grew into it, if you will. I mean, you, you do everything from scrubbing pots and pans to running the restaurant to the nightclub and you kind of go from there so yeah being a hotelier teaches you how to make a bed regardless of what your position yes. at the hotel is at yes and when you and when you when you go to college and you go to the hotel school it might be a very nice hotel school but everybody all your buddies say well what kind of hospital corner did you learn today you know that's yes. the thing yeah. Uh, but the, the, ho the hotel industry is, is such a, a varied, there's so many different aspects of, of um, it's such a, a, a varying field of psychology and accounting and um, there's so many things that, so many moving parts, but it's very interesting. It's yeah, great I, industry. I agree. So um, you've been here five and a half years. So what is your favorite thing about the job besides the wonderful people you work with? Yes, beyond the wonderful people that I work with, which is fun, I swear, it really is. Um, uh, our Zoom meetings, staff meetings are a blast. Um, but uh, it's, that, it's that variety I spoke of yesterday. Um, I spoke of, of uh, a few minutes ago, combined with like letting customers know about aspects of the open hotel program that they have that they didn't know they could utilize and when they go oh man like it's something we just introduced yesterday and it's something they've had the ability to do for years it kind of surprises me but that's very uh fulfilling when they go wow this is fantastic this is gonna change how i do business that's a that's a big that's plus even though i mean we have so much training and so much documentation yes there's so much you can do with you know each piece of it but it's you know nobody knows it all except you guys and support. yeah so so um so as a follow-up to that what's the worst part uh i would i would normally say the worst part is is sometimes there are folks that don't take advantage of things they have and they don't take advantage of the documentation that you just mentioned um but uh you know they they have to uh there's just so much there in our support portal the videos um the uh, the articles the blogs um, they're just it's tremendous and um when they it's, it's a little bit frustrating sometimes when they ask a question, you think, wow, man, you're missing out. You're missing out on something that could really assist you, but you need to take a look, look into it. So, so, so let, let's talk about the OTAs for a minute. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the biggest thing they miss out on with the OTAs? I mean, and OTAs are a love-hate. Everybody loves them and hates them. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's it's a um, when there are times when we're trying to educate our clients about opportunities that the OTAs may have, and it is a love hate because it gets expensive, but they have to take advantage. You have to be kind of shrewd and use the OTAs. You're you're paying for that. You want to use them to the best ability that you can. Get the get the most advertising buck out of it um, and then hopefully turn those sales around and get them to book direct. Um, but it's it's a challenge sometimes because there, it is a love-hate relationship. If you have empty rooms, there's no reason to have empty rooms. There's no reason not to do um, a discount or you know, as long as you're not getting to the point where the OTA is making more money than you are. 
Um, if you're if you're making some money and the room sits empty, that's it. Um, I I uh, I learned a very long time ago. I had a, a gentleman, a boss, say to me, "The most expendable thing in the world is the hotel room you didn't sell last night. It just you never got another chance to sell that room. So um, you got to kind of take advantage of every opportunity. And then when you know you're going to sell, then you you don't until you know you you control the inventory and our system is very good at controlling inventory uh for when you want to sell it i just got out of a training uh telling explaining that to some folks that that's you want to uh give the otas inventory for when you want to sell when you need the help and that's one of the things you do a lot of if you work with individual clients on uh getting them to understand different strategies and things to optimize you know because you can't you can't sell tonight's room tomorrow you just nope. you know it's gone nope. Still it's gone have, you know broken That's egg good. whatever you want to call it you know yeah it's done it's a lost opportunity yeah and, and you know that's one of the reasons we get so many incredible comments about you is because you've been in the hotel business for every type of property i mean independents and corporates and you know condos a lot it's been it's been a varied career so yeah you know you you understand the pain you know yeah. and you know you're so willing to help so um so what is the biggest challenge you think you face probably what you just talked about probably yeah and i i think um uh we have great tools uh, two of them rate plans um uh, and yield management that was the training i just provided a little while ago um when i used the system I used the, some of this in a very basic form years ago, and I used it for rate plans for just our own website at the time. Um, never mind all the bells and whistles we have now. Um, I used it to great success. I, I um, people patted me on the back for great job and all this kind of good stuff, but I was just using the tool of the rate plan. Now we have rate plans that are even more robust we have um yield manager we have uh, the rate availability overview report which is val introduced me to that it is now my favorite and i, wow. I it, it just you can look at that and see what you're doing when you're doing it and what maybe the next move needs to be and it's very um exciting in a geeky way i'm sounding very geeky but um uh i i get passionate about rate plans and being able to look in the rate availability overview report and see hey i see an opportunity it's 30 days down the road or it might be 60 days down the road and i can make a change now to increase like for stay or rate whatever but take advantage of an opportunity to make more money and bring more to the bottom dollar one of my favorite reports is the pace report i know that that's yes. you do but you know and whenever i had a meeting staff meetings first re first report that was brought out on the table for everybody was pace report so that's huge how many pace but, reports did we do together <laughs> oh a lot a lot that was the first re first report that went into any meeting was the pace report that was it and yeah. that and that's a that's something i've uh, hung on to for many many years uh, especially if you know you're a destination market or you, you're an event um area you know yes uh, you know well, that's critical that's where um that's where the the rate plans came into play so so much in that um you don't have to do it now because we have other tools to use but I used to have rate plans for Sunday through Thursday and one for Friday and Saturday because I had a different length of stay on Friday and Saturday. Um, different rates. Uh, it was, it was, it was, again, very successful. 
for, for, for both the properties we were managing at the time. I think you remember. Um, and uh, the uh, ultimately it just was wonderful. And now it's so much more robust. There's so much more you can do with it and so many more tweaks that you can make. It's odd today that I did both a training and a, like a mini training for a, a long time customer this morning. And he was, he was using the rate plans in a very positive way and you know, a couple little tweaks and he was like, cool, now we got it just the way we want. It. They have to stay these days, higher rate, perfect. So, so um, if somebody was coming into the hotel business, what would you suggest? Do you have any words of wisdom? Um, That's a tough people, hear, people hear your smile. When you're talking to people on the phone, they hear whether or not you're smiling. And I've had a lot of reservation staff team that were like, really? I'm like, I'm serious. They hear whether you smile. I always want to see smiles on your faces because they can hear it. People hear you smile. So when you deal with people, you gotta, you gotta, it, it's a positivity. So keep that in mind because it's, the, the hotel industry, the hospitality industry is hospitality. You have to, that's what we're there for. That's what we have to do. That, that's literally the name of our game, right? It is. It so, is. Um, if you couldn't be in hospitality, what, what would you do? Oh. And you can't retire and you can't go play with your grandbaby. So. Yeah, because um, that's my favorite pastime right now. Um, yeah. I, I, I've always had a, 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 a desire to be a deep sea diver <laughs> I, or, or a professional diver. I, I think um, with some ear issues for the past number of years of my uh, short life, um, I haven't been able to dive as much as or at all. But um, it is a different world. And you know what? There's no phones. There's no dangers. There's no buzzers. The only thing you can hear is the noisy shrimp and the boats above. So I think that's what I'd like to do. Did, did you say that because of my fish tank behind me? <laughs> no, no. And, and let me tell you, you, you'd never believe how noisy shrimp are. They really, they're, they're like the crickets at night now. So, yeah. So, um, okay, so back to open hotel. So you, what what is the biggest changes you've seen in the last five and a half years? At open hotel? At open um, hotel. Innovation. Or in the industry. Let's pick on the yeah. industry. I think the industry um, has been a little bit more savvy about OTAs. Uh, I think there's there's always been a need to use them as best you can for advertising purposes, which is what they will come to you and say, you know, hey, we're going to advertise your property. That's why you want to do business with us. Um, I think there's a greater understanding of what the OTAs can do and, and how to and how to utilize that as a tool to generate more revenue. Um, for at Open Hotel, I would definitely say innovation because there's um the programming the, just the tools i think the best word is the the tools that we now have to use and now at our fingertips the um i i always you mentioned pace but rate availability overview report you have the ability to see what's going on what's going to happen what business you have um you can change rates on the fly you can change inventory length of stay um, you can shut rooms down. If you're down to your last couple of rooms and you know you're going to sell them, you can close out the inventory on your OTAs and sell them yourself. Um, it just the different tools, that's just one of them. Rate plans have changed. There's, there's more that you can do with them. There's more reporting. I think the reporting is for, for other people, that might be the biggest change for clients um again i geek out a little bit when i talk about rate plans and rate availability and the yield manager um but the tools that are there and the reporting i think reporting is 
for the clients, that's one of the biggest changes. One of the, there's so much to, to do. I, but, and, and to pick up on a point you made is, you know, with the yield management, I think the fact that you can automatically close out the OTAs, yeah. or automatically close out everything except bar is just like, that's just yes. amazing. Uh, you know, I you mentioned that I, um, um, right before this, I was doing a training and I was showing um, these young ladies a, a few different properties and the the use of yield manager at each property. And in one case, it was to close out the OTAs when each, there's a, a rule for each room type. And when they sell the second to last, the OTA closes out. Um, and another property, it was to raise rates. Um, it, there, there's so it, it, there's so many different opportunities in that one tool to um, maximize revenue, either through selling, only accepting sales that are directly through the booking engine on the web, their own website, um, or if it's a matter of just raising rates, uh, or both. One property, it was both at at eighty percent. No more OTAs. We don't need them. We're going to sell the last few rooms ourselves. And by the way, those rooms, the rates are going to go up forty-five dollars a night. So there's, it's such a strong tool. Yeah, you you just can't in today's market. You can't do that yourself. I mean, it's going no. to happen Friday night at two a.m. You're not going to catch it till Monday morning. Yeah, and I don't think hotels nowadays uh, want to. Um, spend the money on salarying a, a revenue manager that can stand you know, and sit around and look at those things. And and again, this tool works for hotels. We have hotels that have 15 rooms and they have yield manager and it helps them tremendously. We have hotels that have 115 rooms and it helps them as well. And it, 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 it can do so much, no matter, no matter how big or small your property is. Yield manager is something that's huge. So. Yeah, I, I can feel your passion. Yep. <laughs> Money to the bottom dollar. All right, here we go. Money to the bottom dollar. So one last thing. Tell us something that someone might not know about you. Um, they might know that I'm married, but they may not know that she's a very patient woman. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the um, grandbaby is not terribly new. That's a year and a half now, and getting to the point where he's tough to keep up with. Um, I'm a little sore for a couple of days after I spend eight hours with him. Um, but that's uh, that, and I think gardening is is my fun. That's what I enjoy doing. Yeah, well, plants and whatnot in the backyard. So yeah, that's gardening. Yeah. 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 Not a whole lot of pretty flowers, although the bird of paradise are just going nuts this year. So well, and you you might mention you are in Florida. You yes, know, I'm in yeah. Vegas. You know, we're all over the place. So. Yeah, yeah. You know. So your heat wave is nothing. I mean, I don't want to deal with that. I'm, I'll deal with the humidity in Florida. So. Yes, well, I think it's 107 today. So yeah, and we're in the fall. But anyway. So now we know Peter and thank you, Peter, for joining us. And thanks to all our viewers and listeners. If you have any suggestions for future topics, uh, please leave them in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube and enjoyed the video, we would appreciate your feedback with a big thumbs up. Uh, links to our podcast version can be found in the video description below. Uh, thanks again and see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.